Now, what's up guys this is astronox i'll be talking about the data mines for the 6th of february so thanks to you fin throwaway on the epic 7 reddit the link is in the description to this post and i'll be covering what is in these uh, data mines uh, some stuff were not part of the uh, official Epic 7 live stream. And I will also talk about Mel Surin. I have uh, her multipliers. I'll go over her skills, her stats. And uh, they are here on this website, e7herder.com. So uh, I will go over this. And uh, we got her uh, model here. It's a model viewer, part of the Epic, uh, well, e7herder.com website. And I'll go over her expressions. So now, let's see here. We have a skin for Bazaar. It's gonna be uh, part of the Epic Pass. So there's the animations for the S3 of Bazaar and ML Surin. I will uh, show you guys that. Side story, banner, assets. Um, so I'll show you guys these things. We've got dual banners. Uh, Ceres uh, and Tamarine together, Vivian and uh, Kawana, Elena with uh, Crozet and the epic pass so it looks like series uh kawana we already know uh, and crozet of course they are four star heroes so it looks like series gonna be a four star hero because i mean uh a dual banner of two five star heroes they've done it in the past and it wasn't well received and i can i mean it's understandable i mean you, you're going for you want that new hero so yeah and uh well, good luck to you guys trying to pull for uh, series. I will try to summon and get her so I can showcase her. But let's go see what else we have in store here. They're saying that the uh, what is it? New side story sequence should be if uh, we, okay. I mean, they're thinking that the sequence for these side stories will be uh, Vivian and Kawana together, and then Crozet and Elena, and finally uh, Ceres and Tamarine. Now, Elena, I mean, she was like released a month and a half ago, so it, it's really like odd that she's there again. But she, she's a very solid uh, Soul Weaver, and I'm gonna actually summon for her this time. Uh, Vivian, I will actually summon for her as well. Uh, man, I'm gonna need a lot of Covenant bookmarks, aka uh, a lot of Secret Shop refreshes. Tamarine already have Ceres, we'll see what happens, but uh, it's, it's a four star hero, so. Uh, I mean, I, I don't think there's going to be a pity for the four-star hero. At least the rate's going to be higher, probably much higher, of course. So we'll see how it's going to be. Um, there will be a pickup uh, Bazaar banner after Sermia banner, probably for obvious reasons. I mean, he's going to be getting a skin in the Epic Pass, so there's a pretty good chance that he's actually getting a banner again. I mean, it, it happened not long ago, but I'm sure a lot of players don't have Bazaar. Maybe they didn't have like the Covenant bookmarks to actually summon for him, and he's amazing. So, uh, yeah, expect like a bazaar banner once again. Uh, they're saying, like, for, for clarity, uh, Ceres is most likely a four star. Her playable unit data is not in the files yet, so it is not 100% certain. But based on the other banners, she's most likely four star. Uh, her animations and skills should be available next pa patch. Uh, so, I mean, when the patch drops, uh, they can actually data mine the information. Uh, part of the files and uh, they can uh, get that for uh, for us and uh, I will cover this stuff uh, they, they actually like uh, these uh, like data mines are actually landing at a really bad time for uh, uh, the group of youth in Trollway and uh, yeah they, there might be some more data added in here and I'm pretty sure they're, they're gonna have like the skills of ML Surin I mean they were shown on the uh, live stream but I'm talking about the multipliers they should be uh, added in this post but anyways uh, I got them on this uh, other website here uh, e7 herder but first let's go over these uh, these animations and all these uh, pictures before I uh, start covering ml Surin. okay so that's uh, that's the skin for uh, Valentine's Day for uh, bazaar that's the animation now we have ml Surin. I I doubt this is the full animation uh, the whole thing was shown on the uh, live stream and there's a like on the official epic 7 korean uh youtube i'm pretty sure they have a video for her uh full animation with uh, her skills that is the uh you know that's gonna be a side story right there okay and uh we have the dual banners right here 
Cerise Tamarine. And here, Vivian and Kawana. Alina and Crozette. And that's, that's the wrong button. One second. Okay, so that's, uh, here's the Epic Pass. And we have the, uh, the Skid of Bazaar right here. Okay, so let's jump on to uh, ML Surin, shall we? Here we have Tempest Surin. She's going to be a four-star light thief of the Gemini star sign. And her personality is uh, heroism and realistic. Topics for when you camp in the labyrinth is belief and complaint. Uh, complaint is definitely not something that has good synergy from what I, what I remember. Belief is not so bad, actually. Uh, Command 24, Charm 72, and Politics uh, 59. Uh, let's actually, before her skills, let's talk about devotions here for the whole... Uh, what is it actually? Okay, top and uh, back positions. We got effectiveness, which not it's not something that's uh, too too much sought, af sought after, but devotion skill self is actually attack percentage, and you actually want her to uh, deal a lot, of, a lot of damage. So I will go over her skills uh, uh, in a second. So between... 4 to 14 percent now actually like Surin is actually uh, ML Surin is not actually too bad to uh, memory imprint because of course you can use the four star fire Surin to do so and you might have multiple copies saved up unless unless you were actually memory uh, imprinting Surin because you want to get her memory imprint up to get the uh, speed increase I believe it's for two positions and it goes up to like 14 speed the same as fire Shuri so uh, yeah now for her stats, this is a uh, six star level 60. CP of 15.7K. Uh, now her attack seems to be on uh, the lower side. I mean, she's a, uh, she's a four star, 1010 attack. Uh, I mean, it's not so bad, but yeah. Uh, kind of like average or lower than average actually for a thief. Now HP at 5,097, definitely with the defense of 497. That that's low. That that is low survival wise. But you will see her passive makes up for it. Uh, her speed at 117 is actually quite good. When you awaken her uh, from one to six star, here's all the uh, the things that you're gonna be uh, getting. 8% uh, crit rate is definitely not bad on uh, on the sixth awakening. Uh, what else do we have here? Attack percentage, effectiveness. Okay, okay, it's uh, some more crit uh, rate at two star, two star and uh, six star. That's uh, that's good. Twelve percent crit rate right there together. Now her skills, her skills and multipliers. So let me talk about the multipliers. I just done the calculation. So skill one is a hundred eighty-seven percent damage multiplier, and her skill. Three, you, you have a soul burn that actually increases the damage as well, so that's cool. Skill three has a multiplier of mm, 196%, okay? And when you do soul burn it, it becomes 245%, which is pretty solid. It's pretty solid. The soul burn actually requires, are they, they're not saying uh, how many souls you need for soul burning uh, her. It, it, mm, it could be 10 it could be 10. Uh, the multiplier is not that big on it, so I'm assuming it's a 10%, uh, not 10%, but 10 souls to actually uh, do the soul burn. Okay, so also uh, skill one and three damage dealt increases proportional to the amount of the caster's lost health. So the lower her HP, the more damage she will deal. And I, I got something, uh, I was going through the comment uh, on the you can throw away post for the data mines, I, I forgot the, the the person's name that commented this, but they said that on skill one, uh, it goes up to 15% damage increase. Let's say she's at like one HP or something like that, or very low HP, it, it's gonna be an increase of damage of up to 15%. And on skill uh, three, it's gonna be a damage increase of up to uh, 20%. So let's say she's very, very low HP, uh, closer to, uh, to one, of course at zero, cause she'd be dead. Um, so yeah, that's that's okay. That's 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 definitely not bad, especially considering her skill too. That uh, she cannot die in one hit. She, the damage that she suffers cannot exceed fifty percent of her max health. 
So let, let's just talk about skill one and go over all the other stuff here. So dive at the enemy with a chain axe with a 35% chance each to inflict two bleeding effects for two turns. This actually goes up to, uh, in the upgrades, we have 15% effect increase. So this brings it up to 50% chance to inflict, uh, inflict two bleeding effects for two turns. And like I said, the damage dealt increases proportional to the amount of the caster's lost HP. Now, skill two is interesting. Uh, it's like uh, Chaos Inquisitor, of course, uh, you know, he he cannot die in one hit, but his is actually better. I mean, he need, uh, he can take a maximum of 35% of his HP uh, in one hit. So he actually needs straight up like three hits to die, or if there's a barrier, uh, up to four hits. And it's going to be the same thing for ML Surin. Uh, two hits of 50% of her HP would kill her, but if you do have a barrier, let's take a fall in Cecilia, or we have like a DN, or any sort of barrier, like helping her or the artifact to actually apply a barrier on the highest attack uh, hero on the team, something of the sort, right? Well, she, uh, she won't die because even if she has a barrier, it cannot inflict like the barrier plus up to 50% of her max health because it says here that the attack does not exceed 50% of her max health, so it's... Yeah, uh, it should take three hits basically, but there's other things to consider with this thing. Um, well, first here you're getting combat readiness, right? Uh, every time uh, the enemies turn N, but it can only trigger once uh, per turn. And this goes up to a CR boost, a combat readiness boost of 30%. So that's actually, actually pretty powerful and you just need, well, you know, that's the problem. There's a big condition and her HP needs to be below uh, well, 70% or less, so that's kind of big, but but let's say uh, you're facing heroes, right? Uh, Arbiter Vildred and ML Ken, right? They are heroes that can definitely like one-shot you very easily, especially Ar Arbiter Vildred, like he, uh, he just dies and comes back and do his uh, his attack and he, he's full focus too, so that, that definitely hurts, especially uh, when they soul burn his uh, S3, but she cannot die in one hit. So what's gonna happen is that uh, with uh, like a barrier applied on her before like Arbiter Vildred dies or ML can uh, you know counter attacks, well she uh, she's gonna be good to to survive uh, two more attacks uh, if it was like the first time she gets hit. Uh, so that's good and it's gonna give her combat readiness uh, up to 30 percent right whenever uh, an enemy's turn and so so that's good she's gonna be able to cycle through her skill uh faster so that's very good and her skill three is an aoe 60 percent chance goes up to 85 percent chance to make uh the targets unable to be buffed for two turns and the damage dealt increases proportional to the amount of the caster's lost health so that's good it's not a hundred percent chance to make the targets unable to be uh buffed but i mean it's okay the multiplier seems to be all right for a four star hero she's gonna be of the light element so you don't have to worry about elemental disadvantage so that's that's always good right um of course uh, dark heroes will be going pretty hard on her so you could actually use her for baiting uh like you can go full on offense on this hero right uh if you do want to make use of those uh debuffs the bleed and uh, the enable to be buff debuff. Of course, you will need some effectiveness, but for the most case, you can go full on like offense and you'll be able to uh, survive uh, fairly well depending who you are facing because you cannot be one-shotted. So that's, that's cool. That is definitely cool. And uh, we have some damage increase. Uh, did I write it down or I have to calculate this? Here on skill one, you have 15%, 10%, and 5%. So 30% damage increase with skill ups on skill 1. And on skill 3, you have 25% um, damage increase. So definitely not bad. It's not bad. Now, yeah, you can also you can also have her on lifesteal. Now, this will allow her to just leech a bit of HP back uh, if she doesn't have, you know, unhealable applied on her. But it's going to allow her to die in three hits uh, instead of getting killed in two hits that take 50% of her HP if you don't have a barrier applied on her. So that's good. Uh, or you could have, um, you could have uh, lifesteal plus barrier 
and yeah and you can have some survival increase on her uh, of course it won't scale so well because like her base survival is yeah it, it's pretty poor it's pretty poor but yeah she could potentially like that's the thing though it doesn't mean like they will definitely like take a 50 percent of her hp when they attack her but ml can i mean if you hit him with a crit he's gonna counter and he, he's gonna crit you uh, unless you have the uh you know the anti-crit buff 50 percent crit chance reduction that you uh, that you receive and uh arbiter vildred i mean with her poor survival he's definitely gonna take 50 percent hp off of her so anyways, you have, uh, you can definitely build her full on offense. You can, uh, you can try her out with lifesteal set, especially with the AOE attack. She's going to be able to, uh, leech quite a bit of HP back, uh, since she also has not so much health and she, it's going to be easy for, uh, your, uh, your healer, right? To keep her alive. If the healer's heal scales off of, uh, its own max health, like, uh, Destina, uh, well, I mean, other heroes do the same, just uh, as an example. And uh, Akatis as well. Um, you know, Angelique Momorancy, she scales off of her, uh, of the target's max health. So there's that to take uh, into consideration. Also, artifacts like uh, Celestine and Rod, I mean, they heal based on the target's max health. So, yeah, but the, like Fallen Cecilia, her barrier scales off of her max health. So you could use things like that that scales off of the... the the hero that can sustain her uh, instead of uh, like heal or bears that apply based on the target's max health. So you can like potentially like take a full, like if her survival is low, that barrier could make up almost like close to 50% of her health. So, uh, and if you are baiting like dark element into, into her, let's say, uh, you have different possibilities uh, with uh, this hero. Uh, definitely gonna need some testing. I don't like bleeding, you know, on a, whatever, any bleeding really, uh, only, uh, Bai can really makes good use of bleed effects in the game because she can actually detonate them and she applies, uh, quite a few of them. Uh, I mean, 50% chance with the skill ups, uh, that's good. That's good with the 187% multiplier. It's definitely good to, uh, just deal good constant damage in PvE if you do have like 55% uh, effectiveness. But in PvP, that's that's a different ball game though. Uh, debuffs are hard to land. And uh, I mean, it's just bleed really. It's, uh, it's not that much. It's 15% of the uh, caster's attack and it bypasses 70% of the target's defense. Nothing insane though, but it does last two turns. So it's okay. And she's a thief, so she has access to... Uh, some uh, some really powerful uh, thieves uh, artifacts like you could have uh, uh, Luciana and uh, uh, Rihanna and Luciella's uh, five star artifact. You could have a chance to get an extra turn for some more burst. So that is good. But yeah, anyways, that those are my thoughts for this hero for now. And uh, yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comment section about this hero. Uh, I mean, decent kit, decent kit. I'm sure there's going to be some cool plays with uh, this hero. Uh, don't think it's going to be a hero that is game-breaking. I mean, this mechanic of uh, not getting one-shotted is uh, part of Butcher, Corp, Inquisitor, which uh, his specialty change turned him into uh, Chaos Inquisitor. Nothing new there, but she's actually a hero that can deal uh, quite a punch. Uh, yo, Ch Chaos Inquisitor, he... Uh, He's like more on the tanky side, like his skill scales off of his max health uh, as well as his attack. But she is like, she could be pure damage too with her self memory imprint as well as a four star hero is not so bad to actually squeeze a bit more damage out of this thing. And she's got the soul burn that increases the damage too. So that's cool. That's, that's definitely cool. And hopefully it is 10 souls and not 20, but I feel it's going to be 10 for how much more damage it's actually doing. But uh, yeah, now the cooldown is a four turn on skill uh, three. Um, I mean, it, it, it's fairly low. It's fairly low. And the fact that she deals more damage when her HP is lower up to uh, 15 with skill one and 20% more with skill uh, three. That, that's pretty good to squeeze a bit more damage, right? And the fact that like that's something I wanted to say. I didn't cover it. But imagine... Um, Imagine you have lifesteal set, no barrier on the team, right? Applied on her. Now you attack 
um, ML can he like let's say you already got lowered right uh, on the following attack you will be able to leash some life back so he doesn't take he doesn't kill you with the second attack uh, or some other hero ML can with uh, Arbiter Vildred uh, before your support uh, assists you or something like that uh, just you just need to get basically like one percent of health back with the lifesteal and you will need to be uh, hit by three hits but then you could have like a support on the enemy team just finish you off or something like that uh, small cleave uh, anything uh, really it won't take much for her to fall but if it's purely like high like big hits coming your way then uh, yeah you could uh, survive three hits quite easily if you don't have any assistance, aka like maybe in the Guild Wars, you, uh, you're going to be baiting into her and it's going to buy you time, I guess, enough time hopefully to uh, take out uh, one or more uh, heroes. And uh, the fact that, you know, that's an AoE that, that's kill three, so it's going to trigger, that's the prime though, Elbrus, Ritual Sword, you know, uh, is going to trigger ML Ken, it's going to give a focus to Seaside Bellona for her counter attacks. So a lot of things to uh, keep in mind there with all that and if you trigger Elbris, counter set and they, they have a, a disruptive debuff on their skill 1 like a stun, uh, provoke, silence, uh, yeah you could be in trouble of course and be disabled but I mean if you did use your skill 3 if you get provoked you just won't have a choice on who you will target it will just be whoever you uh, got provoke onto you. So, yeah, anyways, that's going to be it for this one, guys. Let me just show you uh, here her expressions real quick. So, okay, so that's normal. Angry. Sad. That's such a big difference. Smile. Panic. <laughs> special 1 and Special 2. So like I said, you have all this stuff uh, available to you. Uh, you can uh, visit the e7herder.com website and uh, it's going to be in the description as well. You can export as well uh, images, like you can save like an expression, save it. I don't know, you want a wallpaper, uh, maybe you are a content creator, you can, uh, you know, ha have images for making thumbnails. Like that, That's what I do basically whenever I want, uh, you know, get the models for uh, doing thumbnails so much simpler with uh, like the help of this website so thanks to them for uh, updating the website for the whole community so anyways that's gonna be it for this one guys thanks for watching i'm astronox like comment and subscribe for more press the bell icon like to be notified whenever i release a new video and check out my other videos they should be showing up on the screen now i got playlists of all sorts uh, for uh, PV and PvP, Arena, Guild Wars, uh, Guides, Tips and Autos, and Abyss Floor 62 Plus, as well as uh, Best Starter Guides for my early to mid-game players. Uh, check those out on their playlist uh, in my channel if you want to progress fast. A lot of good information in there, as well as uh, you should join my Discord server if you still haven't. Community, uh, community uh, Discord is in the description. We have close to a thousand members now. So if you have questions or if you want to help the community, feel free to join us and uh, even talk about other games, not only Epic 7. Uh, there's a channel for that. All right. So that's really it for this one, guys. Good luck with all you do. Peace out for now.